So, ow. <laughs> the main important thing that we want to make sure that we are doing, if you guys remember from last class period, Meadow, the major thing we want to make sure we do is plot the information. So, on this example, we have our two foci. Those are coordinate points. Plus or minus 2 comma 0 would be the point 2, 0 and negative 2, 0. So what I'm simply going to do is plot them, and I'll just label them foci. Okay. Now, that tells me a lot of information already right there. Because now that I know that the foci lie on this line, which is the x-axis, I know that the foci have to lie on the major axis. right? So therefore, I know that this line right here is the major axis, which is the x-axis. That's nice. This line is the minor axis. So what's important about knowing the major and the minor axis? Well, the major axis, what else lies on the major axis? The center goes through it, as well as the vertices. So the only thing we know about the vertices is the major axis length is 10. That means from one vertice to the other vertice is 10. Well, remember, A represents the distance from the center to a vertice, correct? So if 2A is 10, that means A is going to equal 5. Now, the problem is I don't know where the center is, right? However, again, looking back at our equation of ellipse, you can see that this c is the distance from the center to the foci. Well, that's separate. So you can see that the center is exactly in the middle between your two foci, right? So I look at my two foci. I see the distance between them is 4. So therefore, the center point is going to be at 0, 0. So I'll just do center. Follow me? The center is in between the two foci. Here's your two foci. Center's right in between, right? So is 10, like, from, 10 is from one vertice to the other vertice. So from F to F? No, no. Right. No. So from vertice to vertice. No, not to F. That's, that distance is C. The dis so that's five on each side. Five on each side. Right. So let's go and do that. One, two, three, four, five. Vertice number one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Vertice number 2. Right? OK, we're doing pretty good. Now, um, so we know that this value, the distance from the center to the foci is c, whereas the distance to the center to the vertice is a. Correct? So we can just look at our formula here and see that c is equal to 2 and a is equal to 5. Does that make sense? Now, c is not a part of our equation. If you guys look at the equation, c is not a part of the equation. But we did talk about c. It was actually written up there, and I actually do a part. I didn't write it down. But if you had your book, you could have seen the equation for c. And we also did problems like that. So you guys should have had it written down um, on your notes anyways. Right. All right, but before I even get to that, the next, the most important thing. So now I've plotted the information. All the information I've figured out. So that's step one. Step number two is to decide which equation we're going to use. This equation is when you have a major axis that's horizontal. This equation is when you have a major axis that's vertical. So therefore, since my center, my foci, and my vertices all lie on this major axis that's horizontal, I know my equation that I'm going to use is going to look like this. Does everybody agree with me? Yes? OK. So we have our center, which is 0, comma 0. So we know that is going to be, bless you, bless you. Somebody stole my red. There we go. So we know that my center is h and k. We know c is 2 and a is 5. So I can plug in that. So let's plug in the information we know real quick. So we have x minus 0 which is your h, all over 5 squared plus y minus 0 squared over b squared. But we don't know b squared, do we? Right? We don't know b squared. If you guys remember on Desmos and what we worked on is we have this formula that helps us, that helps us talk about the relationship between c squared equals um, well, it's c squared minus a squared minus b squared, and then to solve for c. Oh. So if you want to solve for c, you could go and plug that in. 
Um, or, yeah, it's a, I mean, you could easily just rewrite it like that, right? Isn't that how we learned it last? Yeah, that's how it was written on Desmos. Oh, okay. yeah. okay. Good job. All right. Um, now, so it doesn't matter if you guys want to, let's just, you know, let's write it like this. Um, so we know c is equal to, actually, I like to use the squared one. So now I'm just going to plug in 2 for c equals 5 in for a minus b squared. So this is 4 equal to 25 minus b squared minus 25 minus 25. Negative 21 equals negative b squared. b equals the square root of 21. In reality, sorry, that equals plus or minus the square root of 21, right? Because remember, b, you go up, up square root of 21 and down square root of 21, right? Now, also, another thing just to remember isn't, isn't um, actually, you don't even need to solve for b squared. I don't know why I, why I solve for b. But one thing, the square root of 21 always has to be smaller than 5, right? Right? Because a is the distance to the major vertices. But, anyways, we actually didn't need to solve for b. We could have just solved for b squared. Because what do we need to plug into our formula? b squared. B squared. So, therefore, that's 21. So I'm going to erase this. Erase this, write in 21. And then I can just simplify my equation now. So now my final answer is x squared over 25 plus y squared over 21 equals 1. OK? It's a systematic approach, though, guys. If you plot the information, find all the information you can figure out from there, then you have to make the next major decision.